Hello all, welcome to today's session. Today we are going to talk about taxation of non-resident Indian. And today this is a very special week that we are doing a lot of activities so that you can file your income tax return. We are in the middle of income tax return filing season. season. Therefore, we are celebrating the big filing week where uh, you are going to file the income tax return and will get a lot of uh, great rewards for filing the income tax return. Now, please do take this opportunity to file your income tax return within the due time so that you can take a lot of benefit for filing the income tax return. Now, in today's session, we are going to talk about tax filing for the non-resident Indians. Now, there are a lot of questions, a lot of pain points for non-resident Indians for filing their income tax return in India. Now, we are going to talk about how they can file their income tax return. They have certain questions. They have certain uh, certain amount of queries, how they can go about and file their income tax return. Now, in this session, we are exclusively talking about non-resident Indians. Indians uh, who are not in India for a period in excess of 182 days. Now, first thing we have to understand the for filing the income tax return for non-resident Indians or NRIs is what is their residential status or rather tax residential status. Normally, if a person stays in India for a period in excess of 182 days, that is 182 days or more, in that case, they become the tax resident of India. However, there is another less talked about provision which says if you are staying in India for a period of 60 days and 365 days, uh, sorry, 60 days in the previous financial year or the financial year in question and 365 days in total in four previous financial year that is preceding the uh, relevant financial year, in that case, that person becomes a tax resident in India. However, if you are a person who is only visiting India, in that case, the 60 days criteria is not particularly seen. The 60 days criteria is substituted by 182 days. Therefore, if you are coming to visit India, if you are a non-resident India or a person of Indian origin who are staying outside India for a quite a long time and coming to visit India during the festive times, maybe Diwali's or family function or something like that, in that case, if your stay in India is more than 182 days, in that case, you will become a tax resident. Otherwise, if your stay is lesser than that, uh, you will not become a tax resident in India. However, in a very recent amendment, Income Tax Department has changed the uh, rules of tax residency a little bit. If you are a non-resident Indian, you are coming to visit India, and from India, if your income is more than 15 lakh rupees and your number of days stay in India is more than 120 days, in that case, you will straight away become a resident but not ordinary resident. There are certain parks for being a non-resident. There are certain parks of being resident but not ordinary resident. For example, in our eyes, non-resident Indians, they are supposed to pay taxes only on Indian income they are having, right? So non-resident Indians can, can have multiple heads of income in India, right? They can have rental income from their property. They can have some capital gains. They can have some dividend income or interest income. Therefore, only those type of income will be taxed in India. If they have any income which is not originating in India or not received in India, they will never be taxed in India. <clears throat> Furthermore, non-resident Indians are not supposed to disclose the detail of their foreign holdings. Right? So, one person may be a non-resident in India. They may have certain shares, uh, bonds, etc., etc., of a foreign entity foreign entity in perspective of india from the perspective of india so they are not supposed to disclose that particular asset holding in their income indian income tax return 
<clears throat> so they can easily go for it. Furthermore, there are a lot of provision mentioned in Indian Income Tax Act, which gives certain special treatment for uh, for for earnings of non-resident Indians. For example, under 115A, Section 115A, if a non-resident person is getting dividend from Indian entities, in that case, that will be taxed at the rate of 20% in case the investment is made in foreign currency, right? However, just because the special provisions are there, they are uh, not required to be opted in. Non-resident Indians can opt for special tax provision or the normal income tax provision in India. For example, uh, for let's assume the non-resident has around three to four lakh rupees, four lakh rupees of dividend income originating in India, right? <coughs> Along with another three lakh rupees of interest earning in India, right? So all in all, that person has around seven lakh rupees of income originating in India. Now, if we look at the old regime slab rate. That is 5%, 20%, and 30%. In that case, uh, on the dividend amount, they are going to pay uh, a little, uh, little more than uh, so. Four lakh rupees is the dividend, so they are going to pay around uh, eighty thousand rupees as taxes. However, that is flat 20% rate if they are opting for special tax provision. However, if they go for the slab rate. Right. If, if they are foregoing the special tax provision, what will happen? They will still be able to take the slab rates benefit, right? That is 5% from 2 lakh 50,000 rupees to 5 lakh rupees. They will be taxed at the rate of 5%. Beyond that, up to 10 lakh rupees, they will be taxed at the rate of 20%. So there is a lot of scope for tax planning for non-resident Indians. They can opt for special tax regime special tax provision as well as they can forego it and go for the normal tax provisions, right? So non-resident Indians, they can actually go in for tax planning and claim a lot of benefit uh, for taxation purposes. However, opting into special tax provision requires certain stringent conditions. If you have to adhere to certain stringent conditions, for example, this special rate of 20% tax for dividend uh, that is applicable that is applicable if you are making the investment in india using foreign currency not only that there are a couple of other special provisions as well for example 115e 115f so again 115e actually says if you are investing money in india in foreign currency and investing in specified asset which is uh shares of indian listed entity in that case in that case rate of tax will be 10 percent right however uh in indian income taxes as per indian income taxes uh for long term asset uh, the rate of tax is 10 percent for listed entities section 115f on the other hand actually says that if you are a non-resident india and if you are investing in specified asset, then you can avail a tax benefit if you are investing the uh, sale proceeds into another specific asset. Now, specific asset in both these two cases, in both these two cases are Indian listed shares, right? So you can take a tax break, break for investing in Indian specific asset. However, the investment need to be made in foreign currency and you need to be opting for special tax provision. Otherwise, you will not be able to claim the benefit. Secondly, uh, non-resident Indians can opt for DTAA rates of taxes. Now, as we all know, on one particular income, you are not supposed to pay tax, tax two times, right? So if non-resident Indian are getting some income originating from India, they are supposed to pay taxes in India because India is a source country. However, since they are resident in another country, tax resident of another country, they are supposed to pay taxes on that particular country as well, according to the tax laws of that country. 
However, India has TTWA double tax avoidance agreement with multiple countries. <clears throat> right. So, if a resident of that particular country uh, is getting income from India, in that case, DTWA rates can also come into picture. Right. They can offer their income at the rate specified under DTWA and pay taxes as per that specific rate. Normally, the rate of taxes under DTWA for source country is lesser than the rate of tax in the uh, resident country. Right. So they can pay a lesser amount of taxes in India and offer the uh the amount of income in the resident country and take a tax relief foreign tax relief in that resident country for taxes they have paid in india however <coughs> excuse me the best part is the outflow of taxes india india will be quite less and they will be able to repatriate a higher sum of money outside india there are certain complications while sending money outside India as well. For example, to send the money outside India, they need to have two certificates, Form 15C and CB. Now, these certificates are uh, issued by a bank and a chartered accountant. Normally, what happens if you are sending money outside India, Indian government will permit it through bank, provided you have paid due taxes on that particular income in India. If you have done that, then there is no problem. You can take out the money from India, not a problem. However, a practicing chartered accountant must be uh, certifying this income in India, uh, certifying that taxes on that particular income has been paid in India. Then only you will be able to take out this amount out of India. So these are the points to be remembered for filing the income tax return for non-resident Indians. Uh, please make sure you take the benefit of the filing week, big filing week, so that you can file your income tax return and you have the chance of winning certain uh, prizes at, as well. So thank you all for joining with us. Hopefully you have learn something and you will be able to implement these learnings in your income tax return filing. Thank you for staying with us. Bye.